Good morning. The call to worship reading this morning comes from Psalm 95. It's a call to worship and obedience. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. For the Lord is the great God and the great King above gods. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. The heights of the hills are also his. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will, hear his voice. Oh, they tell me of a home far beyond the skies. They tell me of a home far away. Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an unclouded day. Oh, the land of cloudless days. Oh, the land of the unclouded skies. Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an unclouded day. Oh, they tell me of a home where my friends have gone. They tell me of a land far away Where the tree of life in eternal bloom Sheds its fragrance through the unclouded day Oh, the land of cloudless days Oh, the land of the unclouded skies Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise Oh, they tell me of an unclouded day Oh, they tell me of a king and his beauty there And they tell me that mine I shall behold Where he sits on a throne that is whiter than snow In a city that is made of gold Oh, the land of cloudless days Oh of the unclouded skies Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise Oh, they tell me of an unclouded day Oh, the land of cloudless days Oh, the land of the unclouded skies Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise of an unclouded day Oh, they tell me of an unclouded day Thank you Well, good morning and it is good good that you are here we're thrilled that you uh took time out of your schedule uh, to be with us. Scripture says, I was glad, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. And I do, I, I believe you picked a, picked a great day uh, to come and to be in God's house today. Uh, as always, uh, we want to hear from God. Uh, we want to hear what He has uh, to say to you and to me, and we believe that He's with us, that He's present, that He wants to do a work, whatever that work is, right? It may be specific for, for you today, that, that God is he, He's up to some things, and it's not by accident that you're here, and, but God, God knows that, and He's present. And he wants, right? He wants to deal with the things uh, that's on your heart and on your mind. But when you hear that, I was glad, right? I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. 
you know, what makes that so important is because when you come here into a worship service, a lot of times, right, a lot of times we come and we burdened uh, heavy things on our heart and on our mind. We can be overwhelmed. Why is that? Well, because out in the world, things are messed up. We've already talked about that some already this morning. The things outside and in the world that you face, that I face, are, are, are messed up. They get turned upside down. Um, they're crazy, and that can make you feel all kinds of different things. But when you come here, when you come here, your perspective has an opportunity to change. Uh, your mind has that opportunity to really transform. And you realize when you come to a place of worship, you realize what really lasts in life, you realize what really is important in life, you realize that, that God loves you and uh, that He cares about what's going on, you realize that you can count on Him, that He's never going to leave you, not going to forsake you. And so, yeah, when you come in here, you can say, you know what, I am glad. Amen. I am glad that they said to me, let's go to the house of the Lord because you have an opportunity to, to hear from God as the Holy Spirit moves on your heart and on your mind. You get to, to experience the peace of God, the great love. I mean, think about that. <laughs> that God loves little O you and little O me in this way that we really can't even comprehend, but He does. Amen. And again, doesn't matter what happened last week, doesn't matter what happened this morning, God loves you right where you are today, and He wants more than anything for you just to, just to maybe open up your arms and say, I receive that. I receive your love. I receive your forgiveness. I receive all that you have for me. And so, yeah, we come here and we're glad because we get to experience all that God has for us and the grace that covers you and the grace and protection and God's provision that covers you and your family and your home and his church right here. And so I'm glad that you're with us today. I want to look at just the blessings, the blessings that come from when we gather together in worship. And there's a whole bunch of blessings, but I want to talk about a few of those today that uh, when we come here, right, we come to worship and all of us are created to worship. Everybody's created to worship. That's how God designed us. Now, we don't all worship the God of heaven, but we are everybody. Everybody worships something or someone, but everybody is created to worship, right? It might be might be an entertainer that people worship. It might be a sports figure. It might be a possession. It might be a thing that kind of drives uh, some people. But, uh, but good or bad, um, everybody kind of bows at some kind of an altar. There's a, there's a center, right? Everybody has something that is at the center of their lives. Now, God commands us to have no other gods before me, and we covered all of those uh, commandments, and, and that was the one that we came to first, was no other gods before me. And so out of our obedience, we worship God alone. And God tells us, right, he tells us to make Him the center of our lives. And God doesn't tell us to make Him the center of our lives because God needs attention or He wants attention or He needs some kind of affirmation from you or from me. That's not it. God tells us to make Him the center of our lives because God knows <laughs> that when you put something else at the center of your life, it's, it's, I mean, it's always going to disappoint. Always. Right? It's never going to satisfy you. It's always going to let you down. 
And, and, and I mean, and those can be some, some, some good things that, you know, that, that people try to, try to put at the center of their lives and, and you know, relationships and careers and, and, and work and, and family and, and sports and shopping. I mean, right, those things are all fine, good things, but God didn't design all of those things to be at the center of our lives. I said before, all of those things are great and wonderful, but they make lousy little G gods. And so that's why God says, put me at the center, right? Come and, and worship me. Don't worship anything else. And so God is the only one who will not disappoint. He's always faithful. He's not going to let you down. He's always going to be there for you. He's present in your time of need. And so He's the one that you anchor, really, your whole life to. Build your life on God and the things of God. Worship, right? Worship. And that's what we come to do today. We worship Him. And I think when you do that, right, when you worship God, all of those other things that I, that I talked about, all of those other things you really get to enjoy even more, right? When you worship God and, and He's at the center of your life, then, then all of those other things that you like and enjoy and the hobbies and all of those other things just get that much better when they're in the right place. I want to go to the book of Colossians today in the New Testament. Colossians chapter 3, uh, going to be looking at verses 15, 16, and 17, but before we get there, get there in just a minute, but here Paul, the Apostle Paul, writing to Christian people. He's writing to brothers and sisters in Christ, I mean, people trying to live for God and the things of God, and he writes to them to really encourage them. Hey, you, you're on this spiritual journey. Uh, Paul's writing to encourage them to stay the course, that, that they can do this. He tells them in verse 2 to set their minds on things above, right? Reminds me of the song uh, that Reed sang, right? That's pretty much what Paul was telling them. Set your minds on things above. Don't look around at what's going on around you and the chaos and the crazy and how messed up everything is. But a part of you should all the time be thinking about heaven, Right, there's, right, and so Paul tells them in verse, set your minds on things above, not on earthly things, reminding them that, that God is the answer. Right, this, this world that we live in, it's not all that there is. There's more, right? There's more than that. And so Colossians chapter 3, beginning at verse 15, uh, Paul talks about as believers come to worship together, brothers and sisters in Christ, there are some things that we should experience together and individually as you come to a house of worship, God's house, there are some things that you can experience. And so Paul's sharing that with the church. In verse 15, he says, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body, right, we're all in this together, we're all part of the, the body of Christ, all believers, all faith family. And so since as members of one body, you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through the psalms, the hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all. Do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Let's just look at some things that happen when we come to worship. Now, obviously, we've already got to experience some things, right? We've been worshiping since you, you walked in, in the door, really, uh, so we've already had an opportunity to, to do some things. You've, you've already given, right? That's part of worship, your generosity as you give to uh, the ministries of, of the church, right? It's more than just 
keeping the lights on and, and, and the water running. It's, it's you give and, 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 and your generosity helps, helps us share the good news of the gospel uh, around and to invite people to come and to hear the good news of the gospel. And, and uh, our hope is that your people will, will be saved and at least hear the, hear the gospel, hear the truth about how much Jesus loves them and that their, their lives would be changed. And so your giving helps do that uh, to fulfill the, the Great Commission. Uh, your giving also helps, I mean, all of the ministries, right? All the ministries that we have. And I know talk about the little kiddos, but I mean, this weekend's going to be super fun for them as they learn about the goodness of God and how much God loves them and has a plan for them and they're valuable and they're special and they have a purpose. I mean, you know, Saturday is going to be a big deal. And yeah, there's going to be bounce house and there's slides, but they're also going to be hearing about just that, that God has a plan for them, that Jesus loves them more than anything else. And all of that just wouldn't be possible if you didn't give. And so the kids are going to have an opportunity. They're going to have a, just a blast. Same way with back to school. It's because of your giving. We're able to give out school supplies, right? So already you've been worshiping with your giving and generosity. Some of you had time to, to fellowship. You talk about that in uh, worship, right? Fellowship. Some of you talk to each other before the service and, and you fellowshiped and maybe was inspired or encouraged, uh, felt welcomed. Some of you, after the church service, you might be able to fellowship. Depends on how long the preacher goes. You might not have time. You may have to get home and eat. But uh, some of you, sometimes after church service, you get a time to fellowship. All of that a part of worship. And now we're looking into the Word of God. Again, worshiping. Uh, singing songs. You know, that's a, that's a big part. A big part of, of worship is singing songs and, and music. And around here, right, around here we sing, we sing the old stuff and we sing the new stuff. Uh, I tell people when they ask me uh, about uh, the music that we have, I tell people we sing songs that are tried and true, and we also sing songs that are fresh and new, right? Tried and true, fresh and new. We try to, to do that, and we sing those songs that are tried and true. Those are our hymns, right? Those, wow, powerful, uh, that has moved and touched people. And we try to sing a couple of those hymns during our time of worship together because they're so powerful. And you think about that, there's been tens of thousands of hymns have been written down through hundreds of years, tens of thousands. So most of those we don't even sing. Most of those we don't even know about. And yet we've been able to preserve, what, a few hundred of those in the hymn book that we're able to sing because they've touched your life and the life of maybe your, your parents and your grandparents. And now we're introducing those same wonderful hymns to our little guys and gals. And so we worship singing those songs that are tried and true, but also the songs that are fresh and new. Those songs that you listen to on the way to school and on the way to work, Caleb and the message that kind of help you as you're going down the road or sitting at home on the back porch and, and some of the songs that we sing that are fresh and new, some of the same songs that you hear on the radio and they empower you and encourage you and inspire you and just make your day go better. That's worship. But the thing that the tried and the true and the fresh and the new, the one thing that both of those have in common, it's the words, right? It's the lyrics. It's the lyrics of those words that come from the pages of Scripture that's like, yeah, that's the truth, and you're able to relate. That's how I feel. That's how I feel about God. That's the forgiveness that I have in this song that I'm singing. And so we worship in song, and that's why we can sing, right? In my heart, there rings a melody. There rings a melody of love because those words 
are so important to us. And you put those things to music, right? And uh, you have powerful worship in song. Those are all things that happen to us kind of externally, outwardly, right? You sing, um, you give, you fellowship. Um, but I want to deal, the rest of the time that we have, I want to deal with, we've been talking about shaping our hearts for a couple months now, but what happens on the inside, your heart, your soul, what happens when you come to a place of worship. And I think um, one thing for sure that we've already talked about, many times burdens are just lifted, right? Your heart is able to breathe again because again, right, you come here and sometimes overwhelmed with stuff that's going on and you step in here and you realize that God is bigger, All right? When you come to worship, you, God is bigger and your problems get smaller because you know that God is here and He's present and He's able to deal with you and He's able to move on your heart and on your mind and He continues to answer prayer. And so a lot of times, burdens get lifted. And I, was, I would go as far as to say that worship really is the, is the best cure for feelings of, of just being overwhelmed with some stuff. And, and I know a lot of people have a lot of different ways to kind of cope with stuff, feelings of, of being overwhelmed. And right, you can go shopping, you can take a vacation, I, I just need to get away. And, and there's all kinds of escapisms that we can do to kind of cope and, and kind of whew, be able to breathe again. But worship, worship gets our eyes off of all of that stuff and gets our focus on God and the things of God. And, and again, all of those other things that we try to use to kind of cope with some stuff is, is typically all temporary. But with worship, it's something that will last, and it will last forever. And so in your outline, there's some things there that happen to our hearts when we worship. And the first thing there is worship focuses on God, right? We come into God's house, and immediately our focus is on God, because that's the main thing that we want to do. We want to give God glory, and we want to give Him praise, and so our focus is on Him. Um, do you remember old playgrounds at old parks? And I'm going to think back years and years ago. Don't think new playgrounds with all the fancy safety equipment and nets and siding and all the padded uh, uh, ground that they have on playgrounds. I'm talking about back in the day. <laughs> old school playgrounds were just dangerous. They just, they just were, and I can picture, the picture in my mind is that great big metal slide that every playground had. It took you, felt like, days to just climb up all the way to the top of that metal slide, and no safety features. You didn't know if you was going to go off the slide or over on the other slide. You had no idea. Lots of kids falling off the slide of that great big old metal thing. But what was worse was every one of those metal slides always, always out in the blazing sun, right? Oh, 100 degree weather. And so when you'd go down for the first time, your skin would melt off the back of your legs, right? Those those metal slides on those playgrounds, right? They don't do that anymore. They've got all this safety stuff. And, and the merry-go-round, those things are just a, right, a concussion just waiting to happen. I mean, you'd go around on that, that, that merry-go-round, steel poles all around, right? If, if, you, if you fell inside the merry-go-round when it was whipping around and around, you'd just get kind of uh, back and forth. You'd be hitting uh, all the metal poles. I think it was better just to get flung off, yeah. right? And then you just had kind of skinned knees, but wow, those things would go. And the faster you'd go, the, the dizzier you'd be. And I thought about that, and I thought about dancers 
gymnasts, when they twirl and they're going around and around and around, how is it that they're able to, to not be so dizzy? How can they, after they go around and around for so long, I mean, you look at them, they come out and they're not dizzy, they're not stumbling all over the place. How is that? I thought, I w I'm not going to do it now, but I thought that I'd have everybody stand up and you just go around and around for like 20 or 30 seconds. Anybody want to do that? No. <laughs> Don't do it. But I thought, just think, I mean, if, if you went round and round and round for 20 seconds, some of you might be able to do that, but I'm figuring that most of you probably wouldn't even make it back to your seats, all right? It would just be crazy and, and, and chaotic, but yet these dancers and ice, ice skaters, that's the one, I mean, my, they just round and round and round, and then they get done, and, and no problem. How is it that they're able to to do that and not get so uh, unbalanced. And, and what I found out was that there's a te technique, a lot of different things that they do, but there's one technique called spotting, where they will, as they're turning, they will find a, a fixed object that doesn't move, and as they're going around, they will just keep looking at that fixed object every time, and somehow, that helps their brain not to be so confused. It helps their bodies not to be so disoriented as they're going around. And so, yeah, they're able to, to stop and still have their balance. In the same way, I think when you worship, you're, you're fixing your gaze on the God of heaven who doesn't change, doesn't move, always stable, always constant, the same yesterday, today, and forever, and it helps you not to be so confused and overwhelmed with the things that's going on. That's what worship does for us. But it also helps us to have gratitude, a thankful heart. Psalm 100 tells us to enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise, and worship just helps our hearts to be thankful for all of God's many blessings. And I would just say, just keep practicing thanksgiving. Um, and again, the greatest thanks that we have is, is Jesus, and God given us His Son, His one and only Son, to die for us, to forgive us of our sins and our trespasses. Um, again, the greatest miracle in this world is how if you're a Christian and a believer, how God has taken you from spiritual death to spiritual life. And that's, the, that's the, the, the greatest miracle of all, the miracle of God's salvation, that He would love you so much, send a Son to die on the cross, to take the penalty that you and I deserved, and yet He took it upon Himself. And so again, there's redemption and there's reconciliation with Almighty God. Thank you, right? Thank you for what God has done in your life, what God is doing right now in your life, but also what God wants to do, right? He's not done with you yet. <laughs> He's not done with you yet. And so we thank Him. And I, again, I just say, find ways to, to, to practice thanksgiving. Do it your own way. I'm not going to give you, you know, here's the 10 things that you need to do to, to, to show how thankful you are. I think everybody here, you know, you know what it looks like when you show thankfulness to God. And so I would just say, you do you, okay? You do what you do right now to, to give God thanks. Um, because that's, it's, 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 it's unique to you. It's, 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 it's how you give thanks to God. There's actually a Greek word for that. There's a Greek word in the Bible that talks about doing things your own way, um, Nobody else might do it the way you do it. It's kind of unique to you. Um, that Greek word is, is uh, idios. <laughs> idios. Nope, doesn't have anything to do with idiot. <laughs> All right, so don't even go there. It's, it's idios, I-D-I-O-S, idios. But it's, it's where we get our word idiosyncrasies, right? Your, your idiosyncrasies. It's your own way of doing things. It's kind of how you roll. It's your, 
your, uh, your, your way of doing things that's, that's unique to you. And when I think about that, idiosyncrasies, I think about food because there are some people out there who have some idiosyncrasies when it comes to eating their food. You may be one of those. You may know some of people like this, but there are some people who will keep their food separated in their plate. They don't want their food touching. If that food's touching, I'm not eating it. I'm sorry for you. We'll pray for you. Uh, in Jesus' name, if that's you. But right, your corn's here, your beans are here, and your bread's here, and they're not going to touch each other. Even though it all goes to the same place, they're not touching on your plate. Amen? Amen. That's your idiosyncrasy. That's the way you roll. That's how you do things. Same way with, while we're on food, uh, some people eat one thing at a time. And pray for you too. You eat your corn first, you, you eat your beans until it's all gone, and then at the very end, you eat your bread, right? And so that's just how you do stuff. I don't know why, but that's just how it is, right? Um, same way with you see kids shooting free throws, right? They will um, they'll touch their socks, and then they one, two, three. Four, and then that should, every time, same deal. That's their deal, though, right? That's their thing. That's, that's their rhythm, and that's how they do it, just like in the batter's box, right? You have some kid, he'll do all these kinds of things and touch, he'd touch all over himself, and then he's ready, right? Or then she's ready for the softball to come. But they're idiosyncratic in the behavior that they have, and the Bible says that's really a good thing. You've got your own way of doing things. You've got your own way of giving praise and honor and thanks to God. And so just do you, right? Just do you. As we close, I think worship also helps our memory. Sometimes we need to, to jog our memory. Sometimes you, you might need to think back when, when you got saved. I think it's a good thing to do. I'll go back sometimes and just, wow, God, you saved me from some stuff. And sometimes I don't even want to think about where I would be if God hadn't stepped in. And sometimes I think you just need to go back and remember whether you felt lost or you felt hopeless or you felt alone or you just felt like there was just so much and, and, and nobody could do anything and yet God stepped in. Sometimes you just need to go back to that place where you, you, you knew that God loved you and, uh, and was right there with you Go back to that place where you were saved and say, wow, God, you chose little old me to, to just bring peace and love and happiness to my life. I just thank you. The Bible on and on over and over again tells us to remember. Remember all of those times that, that God has been there for you, uh, put you in a faith family, um, provided for you, protected for you, continues to, to give you peace. And so we need to remember the things that happens a lot of times as things get in the way, right? And, and that kind of gets pushed aside. We got work and we got busy and we got activities and we don't take time to go back and, and remember uh, all of those things that God has blessed us with. And so we need to do that. In the Bible, Jacob was told to go back. Remember that? Jacob was told, Jacob, you need to go back. You need to go back to Bethel, and you need to remember that's the place where you met with God. And so, Jacob, you need to go back, and you need to remember that. And I think it's good. I think it's good for all of us. So I encourage you, <laughs> go back there. Go back there and remember how, how God brought you from darkness into his light from spiritual death to to being alive in christ and just thank him that he loved you so so very much to care about you to do that worship that's all a part of worship i could go on i think i'll stop there again we do a lot of things externally as we worship but primarily worship again is is about the heart 
And God always is wanting to help shape our hearts to draw closer and closer to him so that we can, just like Jesus said, what's the most important command that we have? Well, it's to love God with all of your heart, your mind, your soul, your strength, and also to love those around us. And so it's a, always a heart issue. And so God, help my heart and help my heart to, to be in a place where you can use it and uh, my heart is whole and my heart is healthy and God is really the, the, the one that uh, is able to do that in your life and my life. And so remember, right, remember that. That may be the best part of this whole message is, is just remember the goodness of God and how he continues to care for you and love you. And remember even now, right, even now that God's got you that he loves you like crazy and he wants the very, very best for you. And even right now, right, he wants you to experience all that he has for you, which is a lot. Amen. God has a lot. I'm convinced <laughs> with every person in here, every family represented here, God's not done. He has a lot of things ahead of you and he will use all the things that you've been through, all the things that you've done, the good and the bad and the ugly. He will use all of that for his glory as he moves you forward into this next chapter of your life. Amen. 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 Uh, I think we'll, we'll close with a, with a song in our chorus book. Um, chorus book number 24 which this is, we have come into this house, right? We have come into this house, and maybe we'll sing um, um, just the first stanza, the first verse of that. But before we do that, um, just want to have a, a time of prayer. And then when we sing the, the closing song, though, uh, I'm going to invite you to just be obedient to God and the things of God, and, and we'll have a, another time of prayer then, but let's first, let's just first go to the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you for everyone here. We just thank you that you, as we come to worship, and we are glad, we are glad that we came. And sometimes it's a, it's a struggle, and, and we might even say it's a hassle sometimes to, to get up, and yet when we get here, we're glad, we're glad that they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. And so, Father, we just ask that you have your way in all of our lives. We love you, and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Invite